Our renegades of puck to the trenches. It's time for the briefing of the LA Kings. This, of course, is Renegades of Puck Television, and I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye. Welcome to the bunker, a unique hockey experience that I'm sure after the first week you've already discovered. But if you haven't by now, you need to be going ahead and checking it out. Briefings for each and every Nashville Predators game and also debriefings recapping each and every Nashville Predators game. We're also bringing you hockey coverage from across the landscape. You've already seen as we are starting to branch out after just a couple of episodes here on Renegades of Puck TV. Now, remember, there's easy ways you can get in touch with the show. You can go to renegadesofpuck.com and that is the one-stop shop. You can find out about our merchandise. You can get the links to all of our different social media platforms. And everything you're going to need is right there at Renegades of Puck. Com. Also, remember, you can be a sponsor and partner of the show. Rebirth Sports, Strong Style Fit, Stripe Design, and Digital already on board. We have plenty more opportunities and spaces for you and your company and your brand to be here and partnered with the Renegades of Puck. But you don't have to own a company and you don't have to be a brand to be a partner of the Renegades of Puck. And that's where each and every one of you individual Renegades comes in. And I really want to give stick taps. I'm not going to give out the name, but I really want to give stick taps for the the most generous, mysterious benefactor donation that we got just the other afternoon. Just absolutely incredible. You know who you are, and I know that you're watching, so really, stick taps, love and respect to you for helping keep the trunches and the bunker going for another day. If you'd like to donate even up to a dollar, go ahead and do that at Venmo. You can do that right now by scanning the QR code on the screen, or you can just go to Venmo and search renegadesofpuck.com. Even a dollar a video as you're sponsoring throughout the season is going going to be enough to keep things going. We have made this project passion over perfection, and we have kept our overhead so low that you guys can seriously contribute a dollar at a time for videos and keep this thing moving forward. Support the renegades of Puck, and we will be here forever. We've gone from 10 years of doing this on the radio to now doing this on the internet and doing this as a YouTube show and Renegades of Puck TV. So we'd appreciate each and every one of you for jumping in the trenches and joining us. Remember, it's the no half step and way built by Renegades for Renegades, and it's exactly what we do. One thing I wanted to bring up before we get started with the briefing today, Renegades, is glass being sent down to the AHL. Tommy Novak being promoted from the Admirals back to the Nashville Predators. Now listen, we're only two games into the season, and I understand the results are not pretty. The Preds are 0-2 so far. They have yet to pick up a point on the season, and they've had two home games to open. But this team, with as much turnover as it has had both last year and now this season, with the confusions of last season, the shortened season, the bubble, the division, all of that, and now coming back to the new 82-game season, I thought that John Hines, David Poyle, and the National Predators were going to go with a youth movement. I thought that they were going to get an opportunity to come in here and learn and grow and build chemistry together, but it turns out that's not the point after just two games. I myself had told you, Renegades, we were going to reserve judgment on a lot of topics for at least 10 games just to observe and see exactly what is happening with this Nashville Predators team. But unfortunately, somebody does not seem to be on the same page with each and every one of us Renegades out there. So you'll see Glass move down to the AHL, and according to John Hines, he'll get opportunities to play top-line minutes in Milwaukee while Tommy Novak will get an opportunity to come up here and be a part of this Nashville Predators roster at least for the next couple of days. So the youth movement, I wonder, is that already being thrown out the window? Because this team is not in a position, and I'm sure you've already noticed through two games, they are not in a position to be some sort of dominant team in the Central Division, the Western Conference, or the NHL at large. If anything, they're going to barely scrape through the season. That's why for now, it's not about results for me. It's about watching how this team starts to grow together, build together, gel together, and revive what we've all known throughout history as the Predator way. So I'd appreciate each and every one of you jumping in right now for the briefing. Let's get in and let's talk about it. The Nashville Predators are 0-2 on the season after two games played. That means they have zero points and that puts them four points behind the Minnesota Wild in the Central Division for first place. The Nashville Predators and the Winnipeg Jets, the only two teams in the Central to not have any points so far on the season. The Nashville Predators will actually be playing the Winnipeg Jets coming up here shortly. I'll get to that in just a moment. The Preds on home ice are 0-2. Four-game homestand 
and open up the season. They've already dropped the first two out there. They've scored five, and they've given up seven against. The LA Kings come in with a record of one and one. They have two points on the board. That's fifth in the Pacific, and this will be their first road game. So one and one at home on the season. On the 14th, it was LA 6, Vegas 2, and then on the 16th, Minnesota defeated LA 3-2. to two. The Kings won't play again until Friday night in Dallas. So for the National Purse, it's the first of three matchups against the Los Angeles Kings this season. Of course, the first will be at Bridgestone Arena later on tonight. And then on the 6th of January, the National Purse will make their first road trip of the season to Los Angeles, but then they will be following the Kings back there again in March on the 22nd. So the Preds, two out of three against the LA Kings are on the road this season. So they have to take care of business at Bridgestone Arena in this next game. For the National Purse, after taking care of the Los Angeles Kings, they'll host the New York Rangers to wrap up the four-game homestand, heading off on their first road game of the season, Saturday night in Winnipeg, then Sunday in Minnesota. Now listen, that is a tough one to punch. The Winnipeg Jets currently don't have a point after two games, but the Minnesota Wild are undefeated after two games. So for the National Purse, it's going to be a very difficult Central Division 24-hour road trip Saturday, Sunday. Again, we'll be here with briefings and debriefings for each and every one of those games. For the Nashville Predators, taking a quick look inside the numbers, and yes, it's a very small statistical metric size at this point, but we got to get into the habit. We got to get into the routine through the briefing of getting you exactly these numbers. And as they get more complex, more complicated, we will spend more and more time on them. Goals for the Preds have five right now. That's 20th in the league. Goals against, they have given up seven. That's 18th in the league. Shots, they're averaging 35 per game. That is 10th in the NHL. Shots against, 29 per game. That is 11th. The power play for the National Players is one for six on the season. That is ranked 20th overall. And the penalty kill has given up two on the season. They are four out of six overall on the penalty kill. Same numbers and metrics for the LA Kings. They've scored eight goals on the season. That's seventh in the league currently. Goals against at fifth is 16th. Shots for, they're averaging 39 shots on goal per game through two games. That is a highly impressive number. Shots against 27.5. Their power plays converting at 50%. No, not one or two. Three out of six in two games. Three out of six. That's 10th best in the league at this point. And their penalty kill is perfect. Only two opportunities shorthanded. They killed both of them off. That is best for sixth in the league at this point. Brendan Lemieux is on injured reserve. A couple of stats from the LA Kings to take a look at. Anzi Kopitar, Pred killer. Also leads the league in scoring after just a couple of days. Four goals and three assists for seven points. Drew Doughty pacing just behind him. One goal and five assists for six points. And former Nashville Predator and one of the most beloved players ever to play at Bridgestone Arena in, in the Music City. Victor Arvidsson's got a goal and an assist already early on the season. That is good for two points. Quick and Peterson in net have both gotten one start and they are both one and one. So for the Nashville Predators, Olivier on IR, glass to the AHL, Novak up, and UC Soros. With an 0-2 starter, 2.54 goals against and a 9 save percentage. Now, UC Saros is notoriously slow starting in the early years of his NHL career. Now, the team at large is not playing up to par right now for what you would like and what you would expect because you would have hoped at least the National Predators would have had a split between Seattle and Carolina now moving into L.A. and New York. To be honest with you, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the record, but the Preds need to beat L.A. and they need to beat New York. They need to wrap up this homestand and at least give the fan base something to feel positive about going on the road because I do think it's going to be a very difficult first road trip, two games in 24 hours for this Nashville Predators team. So for the Preds, they got to get things going. They've got to start generating more and more offense and not just in the final minute of the game when the goaltender is pulled after they've already given up an empty net goal. What a weird first two games of the season. But we got a long way to go. 80 more games to go in this NHL season for the Nashville Predators. And once they take care of the LA Kings, they'll deal with the New York Rangers, then Winnipeg and Minnesota to wrap up the second week of the NHL season. Listen, it's a long way to go, and we're going to be in for quite a bit here in the renegades of puck, in the bunker, in the trench. You're going to go through a lot this season. This team is going to take some time to come together. If it is truly going to be a youth movement, then they are going to need that time to develop, and you are going to have to have patience with them as well. I was rather disappointed to see Philip Tomasino out of the lineup as quickly as he was after the first game, and now to see Glass go down to the minor leagues. These are guys that need to get the opportunity to learn and grow and build their games now, not a year and a half from now when they've maxed out every possible thing that they can do in the NHL. If you ask me, Phil Tomasino's already maxed out what he can do at the AHL level. Around the league, there's a lot of games coming up. Tuesday is just jam-packed. It's amazing. Saturday, like everybody plays. Sunday, one game. Monday, 
just a couple of games. And then Tuesday, everybody's back on the ice. We got Vancouver and Buffalo, San Jose at Montreal, Florida at Tampa Bay, Seattle is at New Jersey, Dallas is at Pittsburgh, Colorado's at Washington, Columbus Blue Jackets are at Detroit. The Islanders and the Blackhawks will play the Winnipeg Jets at Minnesota. That is an important game in the Central Division. You'll want to keep your eye on that one. And some late night hockey. Anaheim is in Edmonton taking on the Oilers. Renegades of Puck.com is how you can find everything you need to know about the Renegades of Puck. Jump in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. This is the briefing right here. We'll have a debriefing after the LA Kings game to get you all squared away and all set up. The Rebirth Sports Recap will come to you after every single game. We'll try to get those to you as early as possible with hopefully one day rivaling the speed and intensity of the post-game show itself where we can be your alternative post-game show. But since we're starting from scratch, we're learning everything from the ground floor up. And to be honest with you, the Renegades of Puck are doing a fantastic job through just one week. We're gelling quicker than some of your favorite hockey players are. That's for certain. So a new format, a whole new thing that we're doing right here. We're no fluff anymore. It used to take you 11 minutes to get through the intro of the previous version of this show, which was a radio show. Now, with the briefings, I hope to get you in and out the door in under 15 minutes. And with the debriefings, I hope to get you in and out in under 25 minutes. That way, it is efficient, it is effective, and we will bring you the information that you need. We won't fail you, Renegades of Puck. Jump in the trenches with us each and every day right here, ROP TV on YouTube and all of our social media platforms. Before we head out for the day, I always like to leave you a little bit of motivation, a little bit of excitement, and you know who it's time for. I have no idea where he's going to turn up next. All I know is that he is the ultimate predator. All right, Renegades, we're not exactly where we wanted to be. We are now 0-2. We're the answer to a trivia question. But that doesn't mean we're out of it. The competitive rebuild marches on. We still have the speed. We still have the talent. We still have the drive. We have 17,500 strong inside Bridgestone Arena. And tonight, we are going to show LA just exactly who the real kings of hockey are. You're not just next. You're going to be first. And we are going to make sure that the hockey world knows Smashville may be down, but we are never out. Thanks so much, Ulti. You're the best, man. Getting the people all fired up, getting everybody all excited for the LA Kings game. I can't wait to see what you've got to say about those New York Rangers coming in to close out the homestand in just a couple of days. Listen, before we head out the door, let me remind you about the Renegades of Puck Grievance Line. 615-640-0916. 615-640-0916. Leave us a message. It's completely anonymous. It's there for you to vent. You can say anything that you want to say on the Renegades of Puck Grievance Line voice mail we will select and play the best audio of the week here on renegades of puck tv if we get enough good messages if we get enough good grievances complaints and whatever it is that you guys are going to be doing on that phone line then we'll go ahead and put together an individual specific video just for the grievance line so again get on that phone line 615-640-0916 listen i know people don't like picking up the phone and calling anybody anymore but this is your opportunity to call and vent and let us know exactly what you feel about the preds oh and two start or about everything going on with the potential youth movement glass already being sent to the ahl tomasino already being benched in favor of rocco grimaldi we've got a lot to talk about after just two games renegades and we'll be here to do that with you renegades puck.com every single social media platform and thanks to our tremendous partners each and every one of you plus rebirth sports plus Strong Style Fit, plus Stripe Digital. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us here on Renegades of Puck TV. That concludes our briefing for the LA Kings. Look forward to debriefing you again soon. Stick taps, love, and respect. I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye.